welcome back to Doctor Who The Community Show, episode 5 of series 2. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Did I leave my picture with three of the Doctors out? That's so classic of me. Look, it's Paul McGann, Peter Davison, Sylvester McCoy, all met at once. Sorry, didn't mean to brag or anything. Had to do it. Had to do it. Five months. That's how long it's been. Possibly six by the time this actually goes out. Whoops. Well, what have I been doing in that time? Stuff. Firstly, and probably most apparent, I've moved. Uh, I've mentioned this in an update video, but I'm in a new place. Me and my lovely fiance, Gemma, have bought this place, so we're no longer renting. And that's been taking up a lot of our time with just doing the place up a bit. And we're not done far from it, but that's fine. The next thing is that I have had a new job. I might have a new one by the time this comes out. Comic-Con has also been and Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. There it is. Wow, it's like a special effect. But yes, I've had my most recent panel with four fantastic guests. Chris Walker-Thompson, Luke Newman, Meg Shirley, and Mr. Tardis Reviews. That's his first, middle, and last name. And also how he wanted me to introduce him, so blame him. And finally, before we actually get on to the show, I would be remiss to talk about the biggest change in the last five months. More important than us moving, more important than us planning our wedding. Time fracture shut. I'm, I'm livid. I'm so livid. Uh, they better be reopening in Manchester like the rumour said, because otherwise I might commit crime. Today's guest is Josh Carr of the Who Knew podcast and fellow MCM host. Oh, he did fantastic. Didn't he, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. Jim says yeah. So yeah, I'll be talking to him about that and many other things later on in the show. And also, if you want to support the show, we still have the Community Show store, which has... Lots of new designs in it from Luigi, Vicky and Bo. Check them out. You'll love them, probably. If you don't, how dare you? Also, if you're an artist, maybe get in contact because uh, all proceeds from each of those designs get split between myself and whoever made that design. So win-win, I say. Without further ado, let's get on with the show. <laughs> fan films are a cornerstone of this fandom. Without fan films... Where would regular films be? Dead in a ditch, I say. I have four fantastic. fantastic fan films for you, starting off with Doctor Who, Memories Are Forever, Chapter One. This is by the ever-talented Fortuna Vega Studios. They just keep knocking out of the park. These creators always one-up themselves, every fan film. Funny story, actually, I live relatively close to these individuals and I've actually gone and met them. I should probably get an interview with you at some point. But I was nearly cast in these fan films, but unfortunately, life got a bit hectic. <laughs> I couldn't even make my own content, let alone appear in other people's. So hopefully that comes back up again. Maybe not the same role, because I'm sure it's been recast since, but you want me in a cameo for Tuna Vega Studios? Also, there is a trigger warning for abusive relationships being portrayed, so if that's a trigger for you, be aware. But otherwise, check this one out. It is fantastic. Here is a clip. Oh. There you are. <sighs> Bloody hell, you're disgusting sometimes. You stink real bad. Have you heard of a shower? Yeah, and where do I go for that? Britain's Most Wanted? We've set up a base somewhere new. Godric's place. Best we can do for now. What about the barn? Ever since the plane crash, every abandoned facility across the country has been raided. Up next by Sylvia Lupian. I hope that's how you say it. Lupin? Lupian? One of those. It's actually something a little bit different. Sarah Jane Smith, Lost in Time. So yeah, most fan films focus around either a fan uh, or original Doctor, and then, you know, it's your standard episode. But this one is kind of like a fan episode of the Sarah Jane Smith adventures. Fairly unique, I'd say. But yes, Sylvia and her team have done a fantastic job with this. Costumes and locations are on point. It does feel like a sort of a lost episode of the Sarah Jane adventures, which, as a fan of that show, and obviously it won't have another episode ever again, sadly, it's just cool to see. So well done, Sylvia. Check this one out. Here's a little clip. Well, it wasn't the machine, your article. I've told you a million times I didn't write it. 
Wait a minute. You remember this. I know you do. You were there with me. This is when... Oh. Yeah, this might be a bad idea. Let's go now. The next one is a Minecraft one. Been a hot minute since I've even played that game. I should get back into it. I love Minecraft. This one is made by The Who Project and it's called Doctor Who Fear Within. Once again, the Time Lord known as the Doctor has regenerated. After crashing down to Earth, he is discovered by a local human whose life is more than meets the eye. I've been made aware of the Who Project for a while. I believe I have promoted them a couple times before. I love a lot of the angles. I love some of the animation that's in there. Uh, back when I tried to make Minecraft fan films, I could never figure out the sort of animation side of things. So all the shots were very boring. Like if the character needed to do something, it would either wobble the head to talk or just, you know, the standard punch animation in the game. So this one's gone above and beyond. I've just realized I need to move that. Better late than never. There we go, now you can actually see that without having to presumably crop like I'll do later. But yes, the Who Project, Fear Within. You know what we're doing. Clip. Oh, weird. What happened here? Everything is spinning. Are you alright over there? Ah. Ah, a human. Great. Just what I need. A what now? Hi, I'm... I'm... Well, believe it or not, I don't really know. And finally is Doctor Who Dark Dimension. This one is by friend of the show, Luke Lane. Featuring the bowler hat doctor. Yeah, I feel like we're running out of names for fan doctors. <laughs> Obviously, like, DW 2012 has, you know, the little red and the purple. So that's, you know, that's colours. That's fine. But now we're getting to the bowler hat doctor. Interesting. Thank God the show hasn't done that. <laughs> the Grandpa Doctor. The Hobo Doctor. The Austin Powers Doctor. The Don't Take Your Eyes Off Him Too Long Doctor. The Beige Doctor. The Opposite of Beige Doctor. The Best Doctor. The Hot Doctor. The Bring Back By Any Means Necessary Doctor. So never personally getting sick of ever Doctor. The Old Young Boy Doctor. The Deserved More Doctor. The Deserved Better Doctor. The Same Teeth Doctor. And finally, the Mustache Doctor. Look at the mustache, you got a mustache. The main thing I want to focus on here is the TARDIS, uh, because it has a Jeff Goldblum cushion in the background for reasons I can't explain, but I don't want to explain. It's perfection. The Clockwork Doctor and his past incarnations, the Bowler Hat Doctor, get stuck in an alternate timeline where they experience lots of strange things going on. It seems that the Valyard has brought them here for his own malicious plot. How will they escape? Will they manage to separate their own TARDISes? Where is Lily? Tune in to find out. There is the odds that we might get ripped to shreds and scattered throughout time and space. What are the odds of that? About 15 billion to one, but forget about the 15 billion, focus on the one. Okay. Lily, trust me. Are you? You will die. Against our combined wits, you're nothing. Yes. Behold! Oh, my giddy aunt! You. Hello, I'm Jonathan Petway, and you've been watching the Disney Channel. <laughs> Pervy with a beard works, doesn't it? Pervy with a beard works. <whistles> Joe Grant, look out. <laughs> Trump with a beard works less. I just look like a homeless beetle. <laughs> I've technically got seven audios, but I'm going to rush through the first five because they're 
technically mine. TT Productions and I sort of teamed up for a short while because a friend of the show, Abby Louise, who is the, sort of the, the CEO, shall we say, of TT Productions, collaborated on the Adventure Games audios, uh, mainly the City of the Daleks one, which I must say did super well. I'm so chuffed. So if you've checked that out already, thank you very much. If you haven't, Clip. Oh, stupid, stupid doctor. I should have followed them. You said it was impossible. Nothing is impossible until I've tried it. <laughs> Could you maybe beat yourself up about it a bit later? After I've stopped half existing. And also, I did the follow up Blood of the Cybermen. Clip. How should I know what stops a Cyberman? Can you do that bit? <laughs> I'm a bit preoccupied now, Miss Useful. If you could think of something fast, I would really oh, appreciate it. Both of those did well. I'm very proud of both. Uh, I do want to do the rest of them, but I haven't had the time or really the energy or, or even the want to do them yet. But I am intending on completing the set. But also... There's three more of mine that I want to share. Me and, again, Abby worked on an Eleven and Jenny Flint series of audios. We're very proud of them. It's three parts telling one sort of long story, and mainly because we both do impressions of these characters and thought it'd be cool to put them together, send them into space for a bit, see what happens. Clip from one. What's this one? The Helmic Regulator. And that one? A atom Accelerator. All right. Uh... How about this little one here? Well, that is... Wait, what, what is that? A clip from two. Now that is a bomber German, I believe. No, get down! It's got a bomber! Clip from three. It's a controlled fracture in time. Well, mostly controlled. Speaking of, I must warn that unit black side of the... You have a real problem getting sidetracked yourself. You know that, right? So if you want to check any of those out, links are in the description, much like everything I'm going to mention today, all in chronological order. But let's go a bit more in depth in the final two. First is Rassilon Productions, a name you should probably know if you've been around for a little while. And has also recently crossed a thousand subscribers, so big congratulations to him. <laughs> congratulations! Torchwood, Darker Days, Series 1, Episode 2, Happy Hunting, Feet Sam Davis, who is the broke cannon guy, should we call him. And I feel like I don't even need to sell you on this audio because look at the cover. What words could I say to improve this? It's already top tier. Shangri-La during the late 80s is a cesspit, but it's Bannerman free, which makes it the perfect holiday destination. Nostalgia Tours is back in business and a lone Slovene named Bran needs a break. But will his break actually go as planned or will it be interrupted? Here is a cheeky clip. Lowry brought in the mincer from the van and dropped the machinery on the floor. Tristan rifled through the remaining innards with an arched eyebrow. This last was no good. Clogged arteries and grey, discoloured organs. Tristan used the moment to remind his boys to never smoke, for fear of having the same happen to them. She was fresh, only downed on the forest trail nearby, but in his soft heart he couldn't help but feel deflated. Another long work month for another spoiled moment. Second grade meat. His boys didn't deserve second grade meat. Both Davis and Rory are absolutely lovely. I've had the chance to speak to both of them and excellent. Love them both. Must get Davis on for a proper interview because he did the sort of joint interview for the Time Fracture special, but I really need to do a solo one. Davis, get in contact. Let's see what we can do. Also, whilst we're on Rory, two quick shout outs to go to his Doctor in Distress cover uh, that I actually joined in with. Yeah, that was, um, that was a choice. But also to his reaction, his live reaction to Power of the Doctor, because that was just funny. Mad views on that video too, but it was just funny. And finally, my god, Vocalab. Vocalab is one of those creators where I I I'm just astounded by the quality. This is not a slight to any other creator of any other field, but when I see a new Vocalab video drop, which is very rare, you know it's going to be incredible. From the voice cast, to the cover, to the soundscape, to the music, it's just spectacular. This one is Doctor Who The Lost Stories Century House. I mean, I'm proud of my tenant voice, but Elliot Crossley takes the cake every time, does he not? But also Darcy as Donna, Craig as Wilf, all of the other voices, both impression and non, is fantastic. Big finish, watch out or hire them. That's all I'm gonna say in that front. And if you're not already sold, here's a clip. If you want to feast on anyone's soul, you'll have to go through me first. 
And let me tell you something. I've got quite a few. Now back off. Good. That's the spirit. Now at this precise moment in time, I'm feeling generous, but that can change. So I'm open to some negotiating. First of all, what are you? I am Ignis. Also, they sent it to me early uh, to like review it, but I never had the time and I feel really bad about that. So very sorry, Vocalab, I'll do better next time. Oh, and I mentioned the music by Ant Tremaine. It's out separately. I've linked that also below. So if you want to listen to just the music or just the soundtrack, there it is. Outstanding work by Ant. Oh, I actually have one more audio. I forgot. <laughs> Man at Desk Productions, who, no joke, Megan Luke, I believe Chris as well thought was fake, <laughs> has made The Nexus Point. Currently, five episodes of this series are out and all are fantastic. It's got a fantastic cast, a few names you might recognize from the community show, including, uh, once again, Abby Louise, as well as the likes of George Gadira, who I really do need to get on the show, as well as Dom. If you haven't checked out Man at Desk Productions before, I would highly recommend it, both for Nexus Point and all of the other fantastic audios they have in store, including their Nth Doctor series. Here is a clipe. Clipe? I'm in clip. Words. English language. What is it? Filthy Terrans. Ah. Oh turning my TARDIS into one of your patients. In a sense. She's connected to your mood, it seems. I'm fine, Mary. Hmm. Where are we now? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Between destinations, as it happens. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, then. That's what I'll do. I'll tell you a story. So once upon a time, there was this girl named Ace. Can I just say, I love doing this at a desk. I never want to move around again. In the previous episodes, I would change the angle depending on what I'm doing, but no, I'm staying at the desk. Do you like the beard, by the way? I think it works for me. Not that I can grow it fully, but shh. The first cosplayer I want to mention is Tara, or the Cos... Parlor? Yeah, Tara the Cosplar... Tara the Cos Parlor. It sounds like Dora the Explorer. I hope that's on purpose, because I like that. She does many different cosplays, but the one I want to mention in particular here is her river song. You don't get enough rivers. You don't get enough rivers. She also does lots of funny videos sort of in character, or like, you know, TikToks and stuff. Go and check her out if you haven't. She seems like a very entertaining individual. Next is a cosplay for Photographer. I believe the only one of these I've shown off in the past is Docker. This is one I've actually met back in the May Comic Con. Here is a shot he took of me personally. I love that. I love the Romana and the Tom Baker one I'm with as well. If you ever spot him at a con, get in contact with him, see if you can get some cool shots, because worth it. You want to look cool? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> and finally, there's Tom Verdi, or Verdi Nerdy Cosplay. Fantastic name. I'm scrolling through now to remind myself, and he's got some fantastic looks, all, I believe, screen accurate. So if you're into screen accuracy, this is this is your guy. He's got some Smith, some Tennant, some Capaldi, even Nardole. Fantastic. You don't get... You know, I said about not getting enough River Song. You do not get enough Nardole. Nardole! Nardole! I want to go space in with Bill. Soldier Vault. He's also got a few props on here, which is really, really cool. There's also some Marvel stuff, if you're into Marvel as well. So go and give Tom Verdi a little follow. A Verdi nerdy follow. <laughs> Twelve years and four psychiatrists. Four. You kept biting them. Why? They said you weren't real. Well, I'm not real. I'm imaginary. Oh, I've gone crazy. Amy with a beard. I think that's a new low for me. <laughs> Connor J. Adkins, someone who I have interviewed in the past and have had the luck and joy of actually meeting in person at the last two MCMs. But Connor J. Adkins has been doing something insane this year, essentially making this large, ongoing mural 
of every single Doctor's era. I believe I've shown the early days of this off before. In fact, he even came on stage at the May MCM panel and I got him to show off what he had done so far up until uh, his Tom Baker one, I believe. Always loving that. Whoa. <laughs> he is currently up to finishing off McCoy, and oh my god, how? I've seen it in person. I've seen the actual thing in person, and actually, he gave me a little gift last time I saw him. Because I had such nice things to say about this piece in particular, he actually gave me his Heaven Sent piece, and he even signed it. I got him to sign it. And, I mean, just look at that. It's spectacular. So imagine that, but about every single Doctor's era, all connected, by the way. So follow his account, because I I've been loving seeing the process, because he s takes a picture of everything he does as he goes, so you get sort of the journey. And I I'm desperate to see it in person, like, all together, because it's going to be fantastic. Also, Connor, you need to start selling these at MCM. You need to get yourself an art table and do this, because you can also get your big piece as, like, a banner with your name across it. I'll fund you. I don't have money, but I'll fund you. <laughs> Up next is Doctor Who Archive, who has made their own 10th Doctor console. I believe they're not the only person to have done this. I I'm actually following another creator whose name escapes me, who is doing the same thing. I'll link up, show it here. I remember when I tried to make my own TARDIS console. We've all tried it at some point. And I look at that and I think, my god, I'm terrible in comparison. <laughs> but looking closely at it, I can also see, like, the phone and those weird little circle things, because of uh, James Sutton showed me that. Outstanding work. I, I love it. Up next is the amazingly talented Dalius, who I believe has also joined the Timeless Doctors fan film project. And if so, congratulations to you, Dalius, because that looks fantastic. But one of the pieces that caught my eye was this sonic screwdriver. This is is CG. I believe this is the Time Lord Victorious sonic screwdriver, something that is inherently hilarious to me. Like, what does the thing wrapped around it do to make it Time Lord Victorious? I need to show the universe that the Doctor is dead. I am now the Time Lord Victorious, and I will be treated as such! But how do I show them? I know. To strike fear into all the cosmos. <laughs> God, I miss Will. But look at it. I mean, the table and the book, I'd also believe, is CG. And I didn't even think about it until I'm looking at it now. Of course it is. How? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm just rereading this because I made this list a little while ago. The Glowing One, an another also fantastically talented CG artist. It's their Sonic base model uh, that they had wrapped around. So, th there we go. The in fact, the Glowing One should get more credit. Dalius! But I mean, both of you are fantastic, both with your Sonics and even your Tardises as well. I believe one of the first shows I did, I promoted Dalius and the Glowing One's Tardis in the TVA from Loki. It's just cool to revisit artists that I've promoted before and seeing what they're up to now. Next is Ryan Rigby, who has done this fantastic piece of Donna Noble. Can you believe Donna's coming back? I can't. It's so good! I don't know how it's gonna work though. But sorry, R Ryan. <laughs> it reminds me of these pieces. I, I don't know who made these ones in particular. Cover by Alice. Uh, so it, it reminds me of these pieces that Alice did for the comic range. I don't know if it's for the comic or they just use it, but it's still fantastic. It reminds me completely of these. This is a good comic, by the way. Love this comic. But yes, well done, Ryan. It looks incredible. The next is The Rebel of Time, aka Alex. I featured something of his before, and here's his most recent one. A composite of the early days War Doctor, which is just an inherently cool idea. I believe the background isn't his, but the seamlessness between the head and the obviously body of Paul McGann is brilliant. So well done, Alex. Big lover of that. And finally is Brooklyn Barton. I've been waiting to do this one, and I really should have done it in the Time Fracture episode, because they did something that I don't think I've seen anyone else do, which is make Time Fracture fan art. Specifically of Zariah, who, if you haven't been to Time Fracture, I won't spoil here what their role is. Evil, naive. I'll just put that. But I mean, specifically this one of her shooting Brian the Ood. 
I mean, I'm sure Rory wouldn't like it. I love these pieces. I mean, Time Fracture obviously will always hold a special place in my heart, not just because of the interviews, but because how amazing the immersive show was. And it was my intro to immersive theatre, which is what I'm doing now as a job. Because of Time Fracture, I am interested in that. But yeah, spectacular fan art. I also like the one of the two Time Lord guides riding Splash Mountain. Spectacular. <laughs> I want more, more Time Fracture art. <laughs> Hi. Oh, hello. Are we here? Yeah, that's that, That's the intro. That's it. It's so cold in here that I can actually see my own breath. Let's get things heated up in the metaphorical sense, and then hopefully it goes into the physical. It's very good to have you on. You've been on the list for a while. You're a fantastic podcast host. You were excellent on stage at MCM earlier this year, so it's fantastic to get to talk to you on the show properly. That means a lot. And I have been on many lists for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no dodgy oh, ones, I should clarify. Yeah, you did make it, yeah, fair, good. Who knew? A fantastic, fantastic Doctor Who podcast. Very simple first question is, when and why did you start it up? Basically, I, I sort of, I, I've always been a Doctor Who fan, but I, I'd never really been involved in the fandom. And then lockdown happened, and I decided to watch all of Classic Who from the start. That led to me tweeting about it a bit, and then a few people started tweeting me back and then very gradually I fell into the Doctor Who Twitter rabbit hole. I'd wanted to do something like this, like a YouTube channel or some kind of podcast for years with multiple failed attempts. So what were they before? <sighs> oh, well, one was music. I used to, I surprisingly, I used to be a musician. So it was like me singing with a guitar uh, it was one YouTube channel. Is that still available to view? I'm going to say no. And then oh, by well. the time this goes up, they'll all have been <laughs> raised by the internet. I'll talk to your other half. And then I also started a film YouTube channel called Roughly Cut, which lasted for three videos. And then I gave up <laughs> September, October time, 2020. I had the idea for the Corridor of Fame first, and I wanted to make that like a website. When the idea of the podcast came along, I was like, that could be a feature. And then I could do the same thing with episodes and have it be like mm. a DVD collection. And then I came up with a name and then I made the logo and then I was in. I was like, oh, this, I've, I have to make this now. As soon as I made the logo, I'm in. And Jess made me a mug. Jess ordered me a mug with the logo on. Did she then continue to say, you have to do it now, you bloody mug? Yeah, it, uh, very nice. Very nicely played. Obviously, you've had some amazing guests on, which I will talk about uh, later on. But was the idea to get those people on like for example sophie aldred was that ever in the initial plan or was it like that would be nice no because i wanted it to sort of be a, in the same way that the community show is sort of a celebration of the people of doctor who mm. and how creative they can be i was like well let's see if there's enough guests to mm -hmm. get that off the ground right. so i started writing a list and within about three or four days i completed a list which i still have on my phone which has over 350 people on it. I ranked it in terms of definitely would come on, someone that I know, someone that I, I speak to and would definitely be up for it. Sort of maybe, and then never gonna happen. Even then you were like curbing your own enthusiasm. Yeah, and the two top of that list were Katie Manning and Rob Shearman. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I'd had both of them on by episode 13. Wow, wow, was it that soon? I knew it was soon, but my word. Katie Manning was episode 10. And then Rob Shearman was, was episode 13. Staying on a similar topic with sort of the origins of the whole thing, you mentioned your other podcast as well, um, one named Roughly Cut, which is a fantastic name for a film podcast, as is Who Knew for this. So where did the name come from? I wrote a few names. I wrote I wrote like a little shortlist. And I, I think I just went for Who Knew because it was snappy. And I said it to Jess and she went, ooh. I like that. I wanted who to be in the name. I know one of them was knowing me, knowing who. <laughs> well, it does work. It works almost better as a name than who knew. But who knew is just shorter. Who knew shorter, it's snappier and the logo looked better. Now I like how we both have 
squared logos. Like, I didn't make mine, but it just works for a Doctor Who themed logo as well. I'm quite proud of the logo because it's very easy to change as well. I've done a couple of variations on it, like for Flux. Pivoting away from the podcast briefly, I want to talk about our shared experience. We've both hosted a Doctor Who panel at MCM somehow. Not a clue. <laughs> exactly. Not a clue. Well, I mean, you've got one on me. You've got, I you've do. Done one more I have than one I up on you, just. But actually, no, because I've technically, d I've, I mean, I've been a panelist, but that was with you. Oh, that's true. Was, I mean, very nice for having me on. So I've been on on the stage three times. That's true. Okay, so we're technically even. Technically, three times as host. So you you take that. I, I love maths. Um, because <laughs> I'm sure other people they they look at you or me up on the stage and they just go how, so. Let's answer that now. How on earth did you get up on that stage for the hosting gig? In terms of physically get up there. Um, <laughs> no Feet. Because I wanted to throw up at every moment. <laughs> People always ask me it with who knew as well, which is like, how? what's your secret for getting guests? And like, what's your secret for convincing all of these people to come on? I'm like, I'm not, I'm not the master. Like, I don't hypnotize people. Are you sure? I just ask. I'm sure. I'm sure, <laughs> Jack. I'm sure. Okay. Yes, I am also sure. I'll rephrase it. I'll rephrase it slightly. Was there like an applying process for MCM specifically? Did you go through like the panel application thing? I did, yeah. Because I did that and was unsuccessful. So congratulations. But it's hard with, with who knew because I've had so many creative people on already. I want to like pin it down to one guest that I've not had on already that I can get a 50 minute panel out of they also have to be free to do comic-con so yeah. basically tell me about it <laughs> yeah so, so what i did it's 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 difficult it's a complicated thing to arrange so what i did instead i was like i, I got in touch with someone at mcm and i just said uh, uh, do you know of any doctor who guests who are coming along that i could maybe approach to do who knew it, it didn't really work out but then the, the the woman who arranged it basically said we do have this Dalek panel this was for May we do have this Dalek panel where the guys who build Daleks at home who are drive around Comic Cons if you've been you'll have seen them Project Dalek yeah fantastic bunch they are so so good and so cool we're doing this panel anyway um, but I think they were just looking for someone who, with a bit of Doctor Who knowledge to host it. Oh, so they were actively looking for someone as well. I think basically someone just said, there's a Doctor Who panel, there's a Doctor Who man, let's put them together. So dumb luck is your strategy. I've just been very lucky. I just ask people and if they say yes, then I think also what people don't see is the spectacular hit rate of no's that I get. All right, let's pivot then. Give me a few examples of those who have outwardly said no, because I've, I've had a few no's as well. One person who I just want to say because they were incredibly lovely about it. I, I have spoken to Rachel Talalay about coming on. I would have loved it. Like you put one of her episodes in, in the DVD collection. I did, yeah. Probably the greatest director of New Who, possibly even the greatest director that Doctor Who has ever seen. But she basically just said she does, she doesn't really like doing podcasts. It's just not really her thing. And that's that's absolutely fine. Like I, I don't really push it with guests. I'm not pushy. Yeah. If someone says no, I'll just I can just get over it. If you want to host your own MCM panel, either go through the application process and get very lucky, or email whoever the hell you can find the email of and hope to God. It's, it's all luck. At the end of the day, even through the application process, like I did, it's dumb luck if you'll get in. <laughs> this is the thing, though. I was incredibly lucky. But you got in with a fantastic panel pitch. That's how you got in. I don't know, it was pretty rudimentary. Like the first time I applied, only two episodes of the show was actually out. So, and, and those first two mental. episodes were rough. <laughs> no, they weren't, they were great. Anyway, don't say that, I was in the first one. Keeping on the MCM theme, I'm not gonna say how you did it, but you, of course, got to do a panel, even though it was short, with Peter Davison, Paul McGann, and Colin Baker, which I do believe you're hopefully getting the footage of at some point. I know you're on the list because I also was tagged in that email. <laughs> really, all I want to know about this panel in particular is just how was it? You know, how shaken were you by the whole experience? It came completely out of the blue as well. I shot my shot 
I sent an email. Basically, I got a no because they, they they'd already sorted all of the panels and everything, and it was all done. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. I wasn't expecting anything from it anyway. And then two weeks before MCM, I just got an email saying we're doing a panel with three doctors. You're in as the host if you want it. I was like. Okay. I had a panic <laughs> attack and I nearly threw up at my work. And then yeah. I just ran around and then I was like that for about two weeks until the moment I got off stage was basically, <laughs> I was just in a constant two week long panic attack. But it was, it was honestly one of the best days of my entire life. It was incredible. And like you said, it was quite a short panel just because it was the end of the day and things were... Yeah, yours was the very last panel quicker. going on. It was the very last panel of the day and things just... It was the very last panel of the weekend. I managed to do about 20 minutes. If I'm honest, I probably would have thrown up if I was on that stage for any longer. So mm. it's probably good that it was it was trimmed down a little bit. As someone who was very fortunate to be uh, attending both of these panels, I mean, the first time I was very casually sat on the floor and the other time I was very casually stood at the back. But uh, as someone who yeah. was only viewing it, I, I do have to say that you did fantastic work on both of them. I was, I'm incredibly proud of you for um, getting through oh. those fears and even Thank with those you. fears, absolutely smashing out of the park. I mean, like you say, if I, if I got to be on that stage with Paul McGann, Peter, Davison and Colin Baker, I'd brick it. I'd, I'd run yeah. into the crowd just going, ah! <laughs> I was thinking of asking a very unfair question, which is a favourite guest, but that's cruel and I'm not going to make you do that. So what I'm going to say instead is, counting only the podcast, so I'm not counting on stage stuff, who has been a sort of standout appearance? So not necessarily like you're surprised or, or, or you were lucky to have them, like from just talking to them, is there any sort of standout pods you'd recommend, should we say? Yeah, there are. Um, like I said, I don't have favourites. I thought what were you were going to say was, who's your least favourite? <laughs> Which I would, uh, the only answer I could give would be you. I so, mean, it's correct. It's I'm, ge correct I'm joking. You were, <laughs> yours, was a, yours was a great pod and you dropped the C-bomb twice. <laughs> I'm a very sweary person. I hide it from the community show, <laughs> just in case. I love the Christmas ones. Which you've also been on a Christmas one. I was very lucky to join um, the Christmas one. Yeah, you, you were not lucky. I was. I felt lucky. Intoxicated. <laughs> In terms of like a main episode of the podcast that I'd recommend, um, Rob Shearman is my always my go-to answer for something like this because he's an absolute joy. Um, and we went very in depth about a lot of things. We went in depth about the Target novel for Dalek. Um, and talking about Big Finish and talking about Dalek itself and what it's like to be a writer and also anxiety and dealing with anxiety as a writer or someone and how, how Doctor Who helps with anxiety. It's one of my favourite chats I've ever had. I, I, um, I had a little cry at the end of that podcast, I'm not going to lie, because I was like, that, that was just... I, I you were that, that chuffed was, with it. That was an incredible episode. I'm going to put you on the spot now. What ones do you like? Well, I always tend to gravitate to the Sophie Aldred one, just because, well, A, that was the first one I, I personally listened to, and you were always attached to the first of anything, but it was also just fascinating to listen to. Also, I do like how now, as we're recording this, it's just after both Rassilon Productions and An Awful Lot of Running podcast both announced her as a guest at nearly the exact same time, but you're the trailblazer. You can say you got there first. But also, she knew about Power of the Doctor at that point. I am 99% sure she knew. July 2021, she knew. Oh, massive. 100%. <laughs> And wish I'd have teased something out of her. Oh, imagine that. Imagine just one slip up. That's all you need. Just like working with Tegan. Wait, no. One question that I'm sure as a podcaster, I mean, I get this a lot for community show guests, but who is your dream guest? Who is the one that by any means necessary, you, you, you're desperate to talk to? You can't just say any of the doctors. If you say a doctor, There's, you have to pick one. I'd love a modern companion. I've always thought Freema Adjaman would be really fun. R Russell or Stephen That's Moffat. That's a good choice. Or yeah. Chris Chibnall. I, I would love to speak to Chris Chibnall. Mm. I have so many questions. <laughs> if anything, like because Russell and Stephen are so open, there's like less that I could ask them. I feel like there's so many stories behind that era. And like he's now started to do a few interviews and they've all been really interesting. So yeah. I think Chris Chibnall is genuinely 
high up on that list. And sure Jodie, I, I just think Jodie would be a hoot, but obviously she's a doctor, so... Yeah, you've discounted her. You've said no. That is the end of my questions for you. Um, thank you very much for coming on. It's about damn time that you uh, came on the community show proper. It's been an absolute pleasure. This final section is just some oddities that I wanted to promote but didn't quite know where to put them. The first one is the 15th Cyber Legion. This group has been around for a while now and they are a non-profit costuming group. Basically they have all these different unique and impressive costumes and they sort of loan them out to different events. More specifically they work with charity events. So I mean just looking at this now they've got the likes of Cybermen, Davros, uh, a Cigarax and so so many more. It is a fantastic idea, fantastically done. And I mean, hey, if you're a Doctor Who based charity event, maybe get in contact, see if you can work something out because what event doesn't need this? Along a sort of similar vein is Project Dalek, who you might know from my May Comic Con panel. They're the Daleks who invaded it. <laughs> if you've got your sonic screwdrivers, feel free this to use them. Really this is This is the most time oh fracture thing I've ever God. seen. Basically, it's a group of Dalek builders who have their Daleks and take them to various different conventions, including MCM. They've all got different names as well. The one that I interacted with a bit was Scar, who was rude. Cheeky little boy, that Dalek Scar. Very cheeky. And finally, by the Kiwi Kingdom, who is a fantastic creator. It's very simple. It's an animation of the Paradigm Daleks entrance from Victory of the Daleks. I know people are very mixed on that episode. I am too. But I always love the entrance scene of the Paradigm Daleks coming out. I'm a big fan of the Paradigm Daleks. Oh, when did this fall down? I mean, how can you not love these? Look at these designs, they're gorgeous. Now imagine these in CG, these are very dusty. Now imagine these in CG rolling out in that crisp HD quality. Mm. They've also got a wide variety of other things. I believe it's also a game in development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're working on a Doctor Who fan game. So if that's something you're interested in, go and check them out. And that is it for Doctor Who The Community Show, episode five of series to. Thank you so much to Josh for coming on the show as a guest. You were fantastic. Thank you to the Daleks for making an appearance. Etc. That was, again, dusty. And the next episode will probably be a Christmas special. So if you've got any Christmas themed fan films or art or what have you, send it my way and I will try my best to include it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.